Maple tubing systems are designed to move sap efficiently from the tree to a tank. In 5 16 inch vacuum tubing installations, tubing systems must also be designed to move air from leaks or from gases coming from the tree out through a vacuum pump. The interface between the tree and the tubing system is the spout. Modern spouts are typically 5 16 inches in diameter. The barrel end that is inserted into the tree is open. The opposite end is designed to be hit with a hammer to seat it in the tap hole. There is also a fitting portion to allow the connection of the tubing system. Sometimes spouts are made of two components, a spout adapter that goes into the tree and a stub spout which connects the adapter to the tubing system. Spouts come in a variety of configurations, compositions, and colors. In general, there are only slight differences in performance. Spout color does not appear to consistently affect sap yield. In normally cold sugar bushes, a darker colored spout may be beneficial, while in normally warm areas or sugar bushes, a light colored or clear spout is probably a better choice. Spouts attach to the system at the tubing fitting end, which usually have one or more barbs to secure the tubing to the spout. It can be difficult to engage the tubing onto the spout without special tubing tools or heat. Lubricants are not recommended, as they may damage the spout or tubing or impart unwanted flavors in the syrup. The tubing connected to the spout is a drop line. It is usually 5 16 inch tubing, about 30 to 36 inches long, which allows producers to reach a wide area on the tree called a tapping band for spout placement. Drop lines should provide flexibility in this section of line and also grip the spout barbs properly. At the opposite end, a T-fitting connects the drop line to the lateral line. The spout, drop line, and T are called the drop line assembly. Often these are constructed before being deployed in the woods for rapid installation. The drop line assembly is most easily installed or cut in to the lateral line system using a two-handed tubing tool. Many producers offset the position of the drop line from the tree. This reduces damage from squirrels and allows for tightening of the lateral line system. Groups of trees are connected via a single lateral line. The general rule is to have an average of five taps per lateral line and never more than 10. Fewer taps per lateral is associated with higher sap yields. Gravity systems can support 25 taps per lateral line. These types of systems should not be vented as this causes faster rates of tap hole drying and results in lower sap yields than from unvented systems. Contact of the lateral line with crop trees and non-crop trees ensures that the lateral line system stays suspended off the ground and out of the snow. Lateral lines run generally uphill and are installed at a height above the expected snowfall. At the top of each lateral line, dead end T's and end rings are used to terminate the sap collection system. An end ring fitting allows the line to be tightened or taken down easily for maintenance. Lateral lines are attached to main lines with connector hooks, which are unions with a hook to connect to the main line wire for tension relief. Tubing runs from the other end of the connector hook through a short piece of tubing called the loop. This loop is useful in helping to detect leaks in the lateral line. Producers check their tubing systems by depressing this loop to observe sap flow and detect leaks. The other end of the loop connects to a saddle or other type of mainline entrance. Saddles are sized appropriately for the size of the mainline they are installed on. The saddles, lateral lines, connectors, and drop line assemblies are referred to as the lateral line system. The mainline tubing system connects all the individual lateral lines to the releaser and vacuum pump. Main lines are generally polyethylene plastic and are either black water potable pipe or NSF approved food grade pipe. For most producers, mainline systems of 3 quarters inch to 2 inches are most common. Above 2 inches, mainlines become difficult to work with, but larger sizes are available. 
Mainline color is fiercely debated. Black mainline is less expensive, but often has a longer lifespan and may result in more sap heating, particularly if mainlines cross open areas. Translucent mainline permits producers to see the sap flow to some degree, but tends to have a shorter lifespan and is more costly. Mainline is usually suspended on rigid support wire to maintain proper slope. Wire ties are used to attach the mainline tubing to the wire for support, and various tensioning approaches using side ties and supporting posts are employed to make sure the tubing does not sag when full of sap. Mainlines are often anchored at the ends to trees or posts using various methods. In general, mainline tubing should be tight, straight, and downhill. Slopes of less than 2% must be carefully installed to prevent sap from pooling in the lines. In designing a vacuum tubing system, no more than one half of the main line should be full of liquid during peak sap flow. Liquid moves along the bottom of the pipe and air is pulled along the top. Keeping the main line slope consistent and at or above 2% grade while avoiding abrupt turns and rapid changes in direction and grade will help to avoid turbulence in the system, which disrupts smooth sap and air movement. Therefore, good knowledge of the sugar bush and proper design, layout, and installation of the tubing system is important to achieve good results. Sections of mainline are joined by various fittings, either PVC or stainless steel. Larger mainlines are sometimes fused together via a form of plastic welding. Fused systems introduce less turbulence in mainlines, but require specialized installation tools and knowledge and tend to be more costly, so these are common only in professionally installed operations. Stainless steel fittings, while expensive, also introduce very low amounts of turbulence in mainlines, have fewer leaks, and are very robust. PVC fittings are considerably cheaper, but introduce more turbulence in the main line. They are also more prone to leaks and breakage than stainless steel fittings. Smaller collection systems may continue as single pipe systems all the way to the sap shed. To achieve stable flow rates of both sap and air, dual main lines are sometimes employed. These systems are associated with about a 10% improvement in sap yield but are considerably more complex and costly. In dual pipeline systems, a single spur mainline connects to two pipes through a manifold, which separates the air from the sap. The lower of the dual mainlines is the wet line, which carries sap. The upper or air line primarily serves to move air. The most common type of manifold is called the whip. The spur mainline connects via a T or Y fitting to the wet line and dry line. Sap moving down the mainline will flow down into the wet line, whereas most air moves upward and continues through the dry line to the pump. Typically, the two pipes in the wet dry system are the same size, or the dry line can be slightly larger. As an added benefit, if the wet line should freeze temporarily, the dry line can act as an alternate route for sap to flow until the wet line thaws out. The single or dual main lines continue down to the releaser. These are generally located near the sap tank or in the sugar house, but can be placed in the woods over a tank. Releasers, also called extractors, come in a variety of types, mechanical, hybrid, or electrical and a variety of sizes and configurations. In all cases, releasers are designed to separate or release the sap from the vacuum. Mechanical releasers use floats and valves to accomplish this. Mechanical releasers do not require electricity. However, they must be located above the level of the sap tank. Electric releasers, on the other hand, require power to operate but can be located more flexibly. They can pump sap to a more desired location and do not cause backflow of sap. Between the releaser and the vacuum pump is a protective device called a moisture trap. This prevents liquid from reaching and damaging the vacuum pump. 
The moisture trap is, in turn, followed by the pump, which pulls air from the tubing system to generate vacuum. Vacuum pumps reduce pressure within the tubing system by pulling out the air. Pumps come in a variety of styles, designs, and capabilities, and are generally selected to match the producer's objectives for CFM and vacuum level. Typical recommendations call for one CFM per 100 taps at the desired vacuum level. More information about maple tubing systems may be found in the several publications available from Maple Extension Advisors or your local maple equipment dealer. The parts of a modern tubing system provide an efficient and productive way to move sap from the woods to the sap tank, where it can be processed into pure maple syrup.